Hello, everyone. Um, as you can notice from my accent, I'm French. The talk will be in English, which I'm sorry for you because it's probably easier for you to learn French than trying to understand my English. But nevertheless, at Happy Days, everything is in English. So, okay. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, different subjects. I won't talk a lot about API. I will try to uh, focus on something a bit different. Uh, the consequences of what we do, when I say we, I mean uh, developers, system administrators, people who deploy or develop, who design new technologies, the consequences that it can have on the political things, typically human rights. So, a bit of context. We have, there is something that we have to remember all the time because it's quite recent, that when API are not accessed by over some ether, it's not in a mythical cloud, they are accessed over a real, an actual network, the internet. So whatever happens to the internet will have consequences on the API we can use. Also, the internet today is used for everything. At the beginning, it was used only as a toy, as a research tool. Um, today, it's used for all aspects of human activity. Business, of course, and very often, uh, it's, um, uh, business is the only activity which is mentioned. Uh, in France, for instance, the uh, uh, ministry in charge of the internet what is uh, part of the Ministry of uh, Economy and Industry, which was not the case in the previous government. Uh, but it's not only business, of course, it's also uh, play, uh, uh, politics, human relationship, etc. So big because the internet is used for everything, it's not just something else in our life, it's a very fabric of our lives. A lot of human activities take place on it, so it's uh, what happens to the internet is important for everyone. Um, I, let me quote Edward Snowden, when he asked for an internet which was meant not only for brands on bullshit, which are very often the two main activities that the, f the conference, meeting, discussions are focused on. Uh, the internet today is used for basically everything. At the time, there was uh, surveys of internet users asking them, what do you use the internet for? How long, uh, how many hours per day? Today, these things seem really long in the past because today we use the internet all the time for everything. A bit of context also about software. Um, many of the people here develop software or deploy software. And again, all the human activities are now done through software. Well, maybe not when you do cooking. I, I'm not sure. Maybe now when even people who cook, I don't, even people who cook probably use some sort of, uh, I don't know, a software assistant to tell them about what they should do at this time. Um, so it's fair to say that probably today software is behind every human activity. Uh, and it, it has a consequence. At most of the conference, there is at least one talk where someone mentioned the famous quotation, with great power come great responsibilities. So I will do the same, because it's, uh, of course, a bit of a cliche, this quotation, but it's also very true. Um, because software is very powerful, we, we all know that, we can do a lot of things with software, it's great. It's uh, uh, an opportunity to do a lot of things, to do it better, faster, etc. But because of that, uh, it has a lot of power and also, of course, a lot of responsibilities. So, I uh, really would like to emphasize that Politics about the internet and about software are important. Some people, some developers or other people who work with computers may think that, oh, it's politics, it's not for us, I'm only doing technical stuff. But there is no longer purely technical stuff when it comes to technologies that are so important in our daily lives. 
And of course, you all know about the internet. You all know about software, about its importance. Maybe not everyone know about uh, human rights. Of course, you've heard about it. But very often, people have only a vague notion of uh, what exactly are human rights. So uh, there are several ways to define human rights. The most common today is the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which was uh, voted by the United Nations exactly 70 years ago. The anniversary was on Monday. Um, a sad anniversary because today, obviously, human rights are uh, not uh, enforced, not respected everywhere in the world. So the important word in Universal Declaration of Human Rights, well, each word is important, but the first one is especially important because human rights are universal, like the internet itself, which means that they are not only for some people, they are for everyone on Earth, even people, for instance, who don't know about computers, who don't know about the internet work, who don't have time or inclination to learn about it. So I suggest that you read, if you, it's not done yet, I suggest that you read this Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It's a very interesting text, and even 70 years ago, it's still up to date. Of course, we could suggest that some modification, a few patch, uh, sending pull requests uh, to the United Nations, but the core of the Universal Declaration is still correct today, even after 70 years. So among these human rights, some are especially relevant for the work we do on the internet and uh, with software, uh, freedom of speech, for instance, uh, freedom of assembly, meaning the ability to gather with uh, li uh, like-minded people, right to privacy, privacy is a big subject in itself, Non-discrimination. Uh, this morning there was a talk where someone showed um, a request, a Google request on Google Image about asking for a picture of a doctor on the vast majority of the picture were male doctors. Even in, in many countries, he, uh, the speaker was uh, talking about the United States, but it's the same thing in France. The majority of the doctors now are women, but when you ask Google a typical doctor, you get a man. So you have a lot of issues about uh, non-discrimination too. Um, so as I said, some people may say, okay, fine, great, uh, human rights are a good thing, but it's uh, politics. On myself, I'm a technical guy. I work only on technical things. I don't care about politics. I leave that to uh, other people. Well, even if you think you only work on practical stuff, what you do has consequences. True, human rights and things like that are politics. I don't deny it. But there are nothing anymore that is purely technical. When you create software that will be deployed in the pockets of uh, 10 million, 100 million, 1 billion people, it's no longer purely technical what you do. It will have practical consequences when your software run on something which is really now part of a typical human being. We don't even need to wait for cyborg or, uh, uh, or augmented people. Today, we already are all of them, all of us. We are already partly... Um, partly computers, partly robots, because of the things we carry with us and we use every day. So because of this power, you can no longer hide behind the idea that it's purely technical. So some people already started to work about the consequences of this importance of human rights. I will take an example because this is something I worked with, work at the IETF. Who knows the IETF here? Okay, a lot of people could. For those who don't know, IETF means uh, Internet Engineering Task Force, and it's the main standard organization of internet protocols. The second one is, of course, the World Wide Web Consortium, who do uh, standards about uh, HTML, ActivityPub, etc. But IETF typically deal with layer three of the uh, layer model of the networks, 
to layer seven, something like that. So protocols like IP, TCP, HTTP, the new version of HTTP, the new new version of HTTP, etc., etc. So the work of the IETF is uh, written in documents called RFC. Among the RFC are the technical standards of the internet. For a long time, the general idea among standard organization was it's a purely technical work. Standards are just technical. We decide that this, uh, this field will have four bits or six bits. We will decide that this field will come before the other. We will design the state machine for a protocol. This is purely technical, nothing to do with politics, nothing to do with human rights. That was the idea. A few years ago, it was still the idea. But uh, things changed and changed while the Immediate reason was, of course, the revelations by Edward Snowden about the amount of mass surveillance that is taking place on the internet. But there was also a long-term evolution before, from the internet, who was just a tool uh, for research or for some people to play with, to an internet which is now, as I said, the space where all human activities take place. Because of that, we can no longer ignore the importance of technical standards for things like human rights. So the IETF created a group dedicated to this work called HRPC, Human Rights and Protocol Considerations. Some people disagreed. Some people said that no, we should not go into politics because it's dangerous, you don't know what can happen, uh, it's not our job, we don't know about it. But the majority of the IETF thought that it was a good idea. The group was mostly a success, meaning that it was able to produce an important document, RFC 8280. Again, it's a must read. Once you have read the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, as I suggested, you can read RFC 8280. It's a long text describing the relationship between internet protocols and human rights. So really, people who work with internet protocols, which is a lot of people today, should really read it. And one of the um, sentence in this RFC is a reference to a previous RFC, 3935, which says that this concept, uh, freedom, decentralization, power to the user, etc., have little to do with the technology that's possible and much to do with the technology that we choose to create. We are not slaves applying uh, general rules. We create things, we design things, we invent new stuff, and because of that, we have both the power and the responsibility. Okay, this, all of this may seem to be quite uh, abstract for most of you. So let's see a few practical cases. First one is the obvious one, working with personal data, because behind every API, there is typically um, uh, some sort of uh, database with personal information. By the way, some people still claim that a personal data is only when there is a name John Smith on it. But no, personal data is everything that can be related to a specific individual. So for instance, an IP address is personal data. Uh, so you often have database of personal data, for instance, to manage uh, authorization of access to an API. And one interesting property of personal databases, of database with personal data, one interesting property is that one day or the other, I was trying to create some sort of suspense, and of course at this time, okay, next slide please, thanks. One day or the other, your database will leak, which means it will be outside, people will sell it, will distribute it. When I say that, many people say, no, not all database. We are very good at security, we take a lot of precautions. Uh, it will not happen to us. So if you say so, it means that you believe that you are better in security like than Yahoo, Equifax, Deloitte, British Airways, Marriott, Quora, all of them big companies where the database of personal data leaked. So don't... Uh, 
don't lie to yourself. One day or the other, your database will leak. What does it mean in practice? It means that it's important to minimize the data that you put in your database. Today, one of the interesting things about, database, about personal data collection is that people collect a lot of data which is completely unnecessary to the task to perform. For instance, if you want to do statistics about where do your users come from, you don't need the full address. The city is sufficient. If you want to do statistics about age of the people, is my API mostly used by young or old people, you don't need the full birth date. Here is sufficient. It's very important to minimize data because it makes more difficult to identify one specific person based on this data. And this point is one of the points that is the most often forgotten by people who manage database. Everybody think about security, about encryption, about uh, two-factor authentication, etc., to secure the database. Most of the time, the best solution to protect data is to have less data. And even better, no data, of course. Um, of course, uh, in the context of the GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation, it's especially important. There is a small mistake in the slide. Uh, GDPR is not mandatory in Europe. It's mandatory if you manage data of European residents, even if yourself are not in Europe, which is important. But GDPR is only a legal problem. Everybody knows about it. Everybody did something to be compliant with GDPR. I'm t talking about something at a higher level ethics, on politics, on responsibility. So being compliant with the GDPR is, of course, mandatory, but it's not enough. Um, another example is logging. Most of the system with an API log access, of course. Seems very common. So even if you don't think you have an explicit database, you have. it's an interesting test when you ask people, do you have a database of personal data? Very often they reply, no, we don't. Then you ask to see the log, and in the log you see IP address, user agent of the web browser, or and a lot of other information, history of previous access, etc., which make it a personal data, a database of personal data. So, do you really need to log all this and to keep it? Because very often, uh, logs are kept as long as there is some free space on the disk which is typically unnecessary. People sometimes say things like, oh, but this is, if there is an attack, for instance, I need to know about it. Yeah, but it's interesting to know about the attack which is currently going on. But do you really need, do you sometimes uh, work on an attack which was three months ago? Not always. So again, it's very important to minimize data. A typical example that you don't need to log the full IP address. You can keep only half of the IP address, the prefix, the first um, a prefix of the IP address, in order to decrease the risk and the responsibilities. If you keep data, it's not uh, data that you keep is not an asset for you. It's a liability, and you have to think about it. It's a, a legal liability under the GDPR, but it's also a moral liability because if this data is therefore used by bad people, it will be your responsibility. Another example of uh, uh, political issues related with the use of API, uh, is it necessary, for instance, if you distribute information, to distribute it through an API? Another solution is to distribute the database. If you have information, and if the information doesn't change a lot, very often, it could be a good idea to distribute the database itself. Of course, there are technical reasons to choose one solution or the other, but people typically don't think about other reasons. For instance, if you distribute the database, you increase the privacy of users because you no longer will know what they are asking for. And you also increase the robustness of the system. If your API is down at one moment, people will still be able to access the data. For instance, in France, BAN, which is the, base, the database of uh, street addresses, of all the possible street addresses in France, is distributed as a full database. You download the files, and you can do what you want with it locally. 
Um, I mentioned um, marketing, advertisement, etc. So it's time for a commercial. I wrote a book. So this is the time to promote it. It's only in French, sorry. But as I said, it's a good idea to learn French. And I talk about this sort of subject. So you are welcome to read it. Even better if you buy it. But even if you don't, I would appreciate if people read it. End of the commercial. Conclusion. So human rights matter. That's the important thing. When you uh, participate in software projects, in projects about API, in projects about things on the internet, people are discussing money, how much will it cost, technical feasibility, performance, sometimes legal concerns, for instance, with the GDPR, but very rarely they are discussing the other consequences of the projects. They should. So what we do as consequences, Sometimes people want to have a responsibility for the good consequences. After all, most of us are well paid because uh, internet and uh, uh, software is a sector where the pay are not too bad. Uh, and we claim that this pay is okay because we do wonderful things that are very useful, but we cannot accept the good consequences of all the work we do and refuse the bad consequences. So what we do as consequences, we have to accept them all. So of course, when you take decisions, there are a lot of criterions to take into account. But today, it's very rare that human rights, uh, things like freedom of speech, privacy, etc., are taken into account. And it would be a good idea to change it. One last picture. Four years ago, in that very room, here at the Beffroi de Montrouge, at the Paris Web Conference, uh, the web developers who were present promised in the Sermon du Beffroi de Montrouge, uh, Beffroi de Montrouge um, uh, promise, that this, they promised to do things, only ethical things, and to always think about the ethical and legal and human rights consequence of what they do. So because we are today in the exact same room, it would be a good opportunity to be reminded of that. Thank you.